Hello YouTube, just want to make another video of the progress of my fume hood. It's coming along pretty nice. Um, the last time you've seen it, it had no sheet metal on the sides, no cable on the top. Half of the stuff up here wasn't functioning. Uh, the fan speed controller wasn't here. Um, the light switch wasn't working, the fume switch wasn't working. Now I have it all wired in. I got my uh, exhaust fan. It's 400 CFM. I think I'll only ever need to run it at like 25% of that. But the six inch pipe goes up and out the wall with the dryer duct. Um, one thing I'd like to say right off the bat, if you're doing anything like this, make sure you measure twice, cut once. Fortunately, I didn't have to pay for this stuff. I can get my hands on it for free. But the first one I made, I fucked up. I measured it 10 inches too short. So, that was kind of a piss off. But, anyway, I got this uh, 20 gauge steel top, the inch and a quarter fold just to cover the tabletop here. And then all the sides are 28 gauge galvanized, just regular ductwork sheet metal. Uh, the screw in the center, I've centered all the screws so they look half decent. That just holds them in there. They actually slip into the corner. So everything turned out nicely. I got the top piece in. Now both bulbs are working. I fixed the ballast. Um, I got the top sheet of sheet metal in. All the wiring is hidden behind there, in the uh, in the corner, so it's all hidden away nicely, sealed off from any of the elements inside the fume hood here. Uh, the other side, there's nothing in there, but I'm a bit OCD, and I think it looks nice to have the same on both sides when you're trying to make it symmetrical. So my plan is though, I'm going to have a magna helix, and I'm going to put the magna helix on the front there on the side. The back of the magna helix will be in there and I'll drill a hole somewhere near the back there. Um, put a nice little fitting for the hose to fit to measure the pressure inside the cabinet here and then I'll have another hole on the top of the cabinet um, to measure atmosphere outside <coughs> and then I can, it'll tell me the, the differential pressure inside the fume hood with the gauge. It'll tell me how well it's functioning. I don't need it, but it's 10 bucks on eBay, so fuck. I placed a bid. If I win it, I win it. If not, I don't. No worries. Um, I went over this before. The chiller unit is working perfectly. The switch for the water is all wired in. The switch for the lights is wired in. Um, the fume hood here. When I ordered this, it came with a variable speed controller, and it was in a box. The, that would plug into the box and the box would plug into the wall. It's unacceptable for me, it looks like shit. I wanted it all on this faceplate here. Um, if you have any experience in electronics, if you pull that box apart, it should be pretty straightforward. If you don't, you shouldn't be screwing around with electronics like that. You should probably just plug it into the little box and plug the box into the wall. If you have any experience with electronics, it is really simple. Um, there's a triac mounted to the back metal plate as a heat sink, so just unscrew that, cut the box all apart, and there's going to be a three-way switch in there, which I've replaced with my own three-way switch, so it looks nice. Um, there's going to be a potentiometer in there, obviously, that's what the dial is on the front, so be careful with that. Um, I cut the potentiometer out, I cut out the, I cut the power in line, and I cut the power out line, and I basically just wired that all up. Um, I replaced the three-way switch with my own three-way switch. So the center is off, if I go down it's full on, and if I go up it's the variable controlled by the little speed knob here, low and high. Um, lights is obviously lights, pump is obviously the pump. A uh, little demonstration here, if I go full on, well we'll start with variable. We go variable, low speed, and if I come up to the fan here, you can see it start up. It's really quiet on low speed. It still does draw um, flaps out there, open up. 
Um, I can't tell you how much it's drying. I can't tell you how much it's, it's probably not doing anything with the front completely open like this. It's not finished yet though. Um, but with the variable speed, I can crank this up. And the speed will also go. And I can adjust it to whatever I want from probably about say 75 CFM all the way up to 400 if not 425 um, the chiller here set it say 5 degrees before the lights would flicker when I started up but that's because the ballast was fucked now it doesn't it still functions perfectly so let's see we got it set here at 3 degrees I'm not going to go all the way down but let it run for a minute here until it starts Obviously, it will pull heat a lot better if there's any heat to pull. I plan on running this at usually around 10 degrees just for simple stuff, but it is very quite capable of pulling the temperature down to almost zero. Well, it could pull it down to zero easily, but I don't want to freeze the water and end up cracking my reservoir and things like that. But it does work really well. Um, but that's that, I'm going to shut that off, shut the pump off here, uh, my lab stands here, I don't know if I went over those before, they're just a piece of steel rod with one end flattened so that it can't pull out of the uh, plaster that's down there, and the plaster is poured in a piece of 4 inch vent pipe, uh, PVC vent pipe, it's all silicone in the corners, but I'm disappointed with myself, it all bubbled, and it looks like fucking crap, so I'm probably going to cut that out and redo it. Other than that, it's not, still not finished yet. Um, I have my plan for the front here, it's going to be a 2 inch strip, if you can see those lines there. So there's going to be a strip go all the way across this two inches, and that'll leave me like nine inch uh, opening at the bottom to reach in and to run extension cords and to allow air into the hood itself. On top of that, I'm going to have a little E-shaped track, and I'll have the same E-shaped track up there, and two pieces of glass, one will slide in the back track, one will slide in the front track, and they'll, they'll go just over halfway, so when it's shut, they overlap each other. Um, believe it or not, that is the hardest part to find, is that little extruded aluminum e-track. I've looked everywhere, I've called windows and door places, glass shops, the Home Depot, Rona, fucking everywhere. I've literally looked everywhere, it's so hard to find. Everything that everybody has is for like a, they look at me like I'm nuts, like I'm not going to find it, or they're talking about something completely different, like the e-track for sliding back door to your house, well that's obviously way too big, I just need something to hold a couple of pieces of like 1 8 inch glass, or plexiglass, or something, um, but yeah, believe it or not, that is the hardest part to find, so if you have that stuff, or can get your hands on that stuff, you're laughing. Because I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find the sheet metal. That was not hard. Well, for me, it's not hard to find, but obviously. Um, but sheet metal shops are everywhere. If you need sheet metal, it's easy to come across. And it's relatively cheap. I'm pretty sure one of these sheets, full sheets, costs about 20 bucks if you're buying a whole shitload of them. So it'll probably cost you about 30 bucks. And this is about one full sheet, and to them cut it to a square, or bend it, or however you need. Uh, couldn't imagine it costing you any more than maybe a hundred dollars tops for all of the sheet metal. Um, don't take my word on it, I didn't pay for this stuff, so I don't know. All the wiring at the top here. Uh, it's all run in conduit and 
conduits up in behind there. But yeah, just thought I'd show you how it's going. Let me know what you think.